I am live, apparently, on this fine Sunday afternoon. It's been a crazy, wild week, both in, you know, us taking a trip and doing all these crazy vlogs throughout the States, a whirlwind tour, but also some really interesting, fun, kind of new tech stuff happening. So we're going to jump into that in a couple of minutes. We're going to be taking Q&A live from you guys. You're a part of this discussion as much as I'm a part of the discussion. So I always want to be hearing from you guys what, what you're thinking. If you're watching this after the fact, hey, I hope you still have fun. We're, we're going to bring some energy. Energy. This Sunday afternoon. I don't really feel like it, but you know, the kids are sleeping and my wife's having quiet time. And son's having quiet time. It's a good time to be live on the YouTube. So I just gotta get the chat going here. Daniel Crotty says, hey, Rain RC says, nice hair. We will talk about the hair. Jason Zhao says, whoa, I was planning on doing homework, but I guess I can wait. And uh, Anna Adam says, same Jason. Uh-oh, we, uh, we in trouble, you guys. Nah, it's okay. You know, maybe you'll learn something. This will impact your life for the greater good for forever. You know, that'd be, that'd be kind of amazing what's going on this Sunday afternoon. A couple of questions there if you're still watching. After the fact, I'll have in the description below when we actually start talking about certain topics. So you can pick that up afterwards and, you know, kind of join in on the conversation. But the fun of live is you guys, the audience. So be sure to uh, jump in on the comments and be a part of that. And hopefully everything works here. I've got, uh, I rented out a couple of my cameras to uh, friends. So I'm on the cheapest camera I have with the one of the cheaper lenses. But, you know, I think it's still, how does it look, you guys? Look and sound okay? Uh, Anna Adam says, my friend's got a pick with you at McDonald's. So oh, yeah, those guys were fun, you guys. So fun. We got 16 people live here, you guys. Wow, Sunday afternoon seems to be like a good time. 18, we're, uh, we're going on, going upwards. You guys, if you have any questions that you want to, you know, drop and get into the live stream, uh, feel free. But today we're going to be talking a little bit, it's, this is more of tech talk, okay? Tech talk. So we're going to be talking about uh, the new Sony A7 III. We're going to be talking about the new Canon M50 that came out. We're going to be talking about me actually going to try out some stuff that I haven't tried before. Where did I put them? I had the Sony RX100. That's an amazing little point and shoot camera. Uh, I've got a GH5 coming that I'm trying out with a bunch of different lenses, and we're going to get into that. And again, creating is not about having the right tools. You can do it on your phone, but having the right tools do help. And so don't let it stop you, but you know, this a big part of this channel is for people who are have maybe a little bit of the means to buy a camera or sell some things and buy a different camera, or they're trying to know what their next upgrade is or whatever's going on there. So that is what we are gonna be talking about here though. Uh, Dan O'Crowley says that set though. Hmm, hopefully it's looking good today. I've got a big monitor here. So if you see me looking over here and you're like, what is he looking at? And, well, I'm looking at, at, at me, looking at you. So that's, that's what we're doing here. A7 III, A7 III. Matt Creek says, have you sold off all of your Panasonic stuff? Uh, yes, yes I did because Sony is very expensive. So I sold all of my stuff to try and get into Sony. I sold like two bodies and six or seven lenses to get one body and three lenses. This is kind of the way that, way that it works. I mean, used is definitely something, but you know, versus other things, uh, Jim, Kalias says a7 III is lit. Yes, I believe I believe that is fairly accurate. Oster Brex, I use a G7. You were one of the people who inspired me to even buy it. Long time follower there. Ty Sarich, thoughts on stabilizers. Might just rock a steady cam for a bit until I decide. So I had bought the Moza Air handheld gimbal. It's kind of like the Jain Crane. I don't know what the other popular ones are. And I had it, and I brought on one professional shoot, but what I found was it was kind of a pain, especially if you're swapping lenses at all, because you got to rebalance it all the time. If you know what lens you're going with, you know, I think it can be good. But also, I knew that I would need to practice a lot more to get the stabilizer to do what I wanted it to do. Uh, but with the camera that I shoot with, it has in-body image stabilization. And you use a trick where you put a strap around your neck and you pull it tight on your neck. And it acts and kind of makes it steady. Not for walking, but even actually it helps for walking, but other things... I found for me, I would much rather just shoot handheld with the strap, and then so I sold the Moza Air, and I don't don't use a motorized gimbal anymore, stabilizer. I don't remember the exact terminology over it. Uh, all right, Alango Tricky says Sony A6300, Panasonic GH5, which is good. They're both amazing. Uh, he says sorry GH4, they're both amazing. So you you just have to decide what you need more of in your life. 
they, they kind of both have pros and cons. You know, maybe tell me a little bit more, give me a little more context about what kind of videos you want to create and we can talk about that because that can be an important question. Everyday Holiday says, back home already, glad you survived the savage USA. Uh, yeah, we almost got killed on the highway from some American drivers who don't know how to drive in the snow. The thing about all-wheel drive is it gives you tons of confidence for going, but we need to break. All-wheel drive does not help you at all. Audi driver who almost killed us. If you haven't seen that vlog yet, that's going to be fun. We're going to jump into actually talking about some real meaty stuff here soon. Soon, soon, soon. Uh, Carlos Ruiz says, hey, Justin, you should review the Canon US M100. Same style as the Sony E5100, which you reviewed a while ago. I'm... Well, we'll talk about the Canon M50 that is coming, and I'll give you my opinion about Canon mirrorless cameras. Excited, yet some things that are a little bit of a letdown. Uh, Anna Adams said it's snowing so much in Regina. Yeah, it is getting wild out there. I think, I don't know how much we're going to get in the end. Six inches or maybe a foot of snow. It is going to be good. Uh, Jason Jow says, what's the difference between the old Gorilla Pods and the new ones, specifically the SLR Zoom versus the 3K? You know what, honestly, I think it's more of a look marketing refresh, although I haven't like had my hands on it. I think that the new 5K has more metal than the old version of the Focus. So there's a little bit more metal in it, so it should hold up a little bit better. The thing about Gorilla Pods is they all eventually wear out over time. They just do. Things end up stretching out and you end up using them. My old Gorilla Pod can barely hold up a camera. The new one is tight like a tiger. Is that a saying? Maybe. Anyway, so I don't know. Maybe there's a little bit more metal in them. The 3K didn't look any better than the old SLR Zoom. I think Gorillapod wants to sell more Gorillapods, and so they made a new version, and they look snazzier, so there could be that. Could be that. All right, well, let's get into some news on the camera front. So if you didn't hear about this, Sony announced the new A7 III. So this is a full frame Sony mirrorless camera. I mean, there was a7 II before that, before there was a7 II. There's a7R three that's out, the a7S II. But where does the a7 III fit? Well, basic, basic, blah, 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 basic specs. 24 megapixels, whatever. I mean, good for photos, full frame sensor. The big ones, it does 4K at either 24 or 30 frames per second. So that's good, shoots 4K, no 60 frames per second, but 4K. It shoots 120 frames per second at 1080p, and that looks good. Like the footage from that looks really good. It's got the in-body image stabilization, which is so nice for video. Now again, keep in mind that something like the GH5 or the Panasonic G85, they have a really small micro four thirds sensor in a big body, and so it gives them a lot more room to allow that sensor to move. So the in-body image stabilization in Panasonic's is typically better simply because they have a lot more space to let it move, whereas you've got a big full frame sensor in these cameras. So while it has in-body image stabilization, big movements like walking and different things, it can't stabilize the same way, but for handheld shots, really nice. So 4K, 120 frames per second at 1080p, in-body image stabilization, and yes, the amazing Sony focusing system. This one looks like really, really good. Now it got the focusing system from the A9, which was just nuts, but this one has more contrast autofocus detection. If you wanna see a video on it, go watch Max Yuryev's channel. Uh, I'll put a link in it below after the fact, if I remember, if not Max Yuryev, he does lots of these kind of reviews. I really appreciated his because he was tracking some like fast moving dune buggies at 120 frames per second, super slow motion, with an 85 millimeter 1.8, which is a super shallow lens, and the camera just nails the focus all the time. It was awesome. The other thing that's really nice about this camera is that the screen on it is actually bright enough to see outside in daylight, which my Sony a6500 shoots 4K in body image stabilization, 120 frames per second, Basically everything the A7 does with a slightly smaller sensor, but the screen is so dim, you can't see it outside if it's bright. They fix it on the A7 III. They've also got the massive new Z battery or Z battery as you people in the States say. So the battery life's about three times longer, they say, as well as dual card slots, which is nice. But will I be buying one? Uh... I, I would want it over my A6500 because it's basically an A6500 on steroids, slightly better rolling shutter, the screen's brighter, you got that full frame sensor, should be better in low light, the 120 frames per second looks better, plus it can shoot in super 35 millimeter mode so I can still use my crop sensor lenses on it, seems to make a lot of sense. The only thing is, 
I still want a camera that I can use for vlogging with a screen that I can see myself on. Sony is supposedly gonna be coming out with an A6700, which may have that, or I also have outside shot hopes that the new A7S III, whenever that comes, might have that as well. So I'm probably not going to upgrade just yet because I wanna buy one of those, but who knows, I would like full frame, but then I would be spending a lot more money on glass and there's not as many lenses out there. So that's the overview on the A7 III. I'm not gonna look in the comments and see what you guys are saying about it. All right. Navid? Yeah, I think that's what it is. Here, you're gonna buy the A7 III. Hopefully that's my answer. Maybe, 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 maybe. Jason, okay, we got that one. Uh, Brandon, Freezing Factor says, Howdy, Zach Tech Review says, I guess my text is invisible. I see your text. Uh, I did turn on the auto moderating thing where I think it pulls out if something was deemed offensive. I have no idea how that works, but. Uh, Osterbrick says, how do you spell Matt's name? I, I don't know what that is. Uh, Morfuzz says, no reason to buy A6500 anymore then. Yeah, so, I mean, obviously money would be a reason potentially because the A7 III, to take advantage of it, you're gonna want full frame glass. And a lot of those options right now are Sony and Sony glass is very expensive. So if you want that camera plus a lens or two, you're probably gonna be at $4,000 kind of minimum. If you wanted something like a 16 to 35 or a 24 to 70, 28, I mean, you can get the, the cheaper ones. But the nice thing about an A6500 right now is you can get an A6500 with the Sigma 18 to 35 millimeter and the MC11 adapter, and I don't know what that would be, $2,000. So price is definitely still part of the equation. It's priced really reasonably. I will say this too, what I really appreciate about Sony, as opposed to the way I see Canon doing things, is Sony was like, you know what, we're gonna basically pack every new feature we have into this new camera and just release it. And there's some people with Sony A9s and A7R3s that are going, this camera's almost as good as ours for a fraction of the price, and in some ways it's better in this area or that area. But Sony is just trying to push the envelope forward as opposed to Canon, I feel, is like, goes like, well, we could put in this feature, or we could put in that feature, but then people wouldn't want to buy the slightly more expensive camera, so we'll just leave that feature out. And, it, you know, this is part of the reason why I feel like Sony is moving so far ahead. So I really appreciate all the features that they've put into it. Uh, Navid, AF on the flag was lit. That's from Max Urias' video. Yeah, crazy. Uh, Shane Reimer says, how about the new Sigma for Sony Prime lenses? So if you didn't hear about this, Sigma announced, I don't know, I'm going to say 15-ish of their Prime lenses are now going to be available in native Sony E-mount. This is really exciting because Sigma makes beautiful lenses, and they're usually not that expensive. So open up a lot more, opens up a lot more options, and I also hope that the more third-party lenses that come out, the more the price of the Sony lenses might come down a little bit. Those lenses look amazing. I think they're all full frame lenses, which is really nice. The thing that I wanna see is whether the autofocus motors in them are gonna be really noisy or not. The 18 to 35, noisy, noisy autofocus motor, basically unusable with audio. The new Sigma 16 millimeter for E-mount, which I have, was perfectly quiet on the A6500, but was really noisy on the A5100. So. That's the thing I wanna see with Sigma. I kinda of want them to update and have new versions of the lenses where they get quieter motors in them because Sony's autofocus system is so, so good that I don't know why you wouldn't use it, but if you can't use any of the audio from your camera because the motors are so noisy, not great. Tamron has announced a new 28 to 75 millimeter F2.8 that they're developing. I'm really excited for that lens because I think it's gonna be relatively inexpensive and a great range. So that's nice. Kind of like a classic 24 to 70, but a little bit different. Into Deep Daniel stream says hi. Hey, hey, thanks for joining in. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. CJ Abroad said, I've used the A7 II for vlogs. It's kind of heavy compared to the A6500. I'll keep the A6500. Yeah, for basic vlogging, I think that's probably smart. Especially, I love the ultra wide angle look. So the 10 to 18 millimeter Sony F4 image stabilized is a great companion, whereas on full frame, you'd be getting the 16 to 35 F4. You could get the F2.8, but that's really heavy and expensive, but that combo would certainly be more heavy than the A6500, which still does a great job. The only thing is if you want to do 4K vlogging, the rolling shutter 
on the a7 III is definitely better, meaning the lines don't get as crooked, or more importantly, when you're walking, that little bit of wobble in 4K can make it look like jello on the a6500. It'd be nice to have that a little bit more control, maybe battery life, but where the a or sorry, the a6500 gets really heavy for me is I have to put a cage on it, and then I have to put a screen on top, and that screen needs batteries on top of it, and the mic, and the Gorillapod. I actually feel like I'm near vlogging with a 1DX Mark II, which is what all the ridiculous people out there like Peter McKinnon and them do. Where everybody's like, it's so heavy, and I'm like, that would be so heavy, but I feel like my rig's probably getting closer to that with all that extra stuff. Give us a flip out screen, Sony. Jeepers, jeepers. All right, what else are we going? Jim Caligas says full frame lenses are very expensive though. Yes, that's what we're saying. Uh, oh, I was talking about a channel called Matt something. It's Max, M-A-X, and Yuryev is Y-U-R-Y-E-V, I believe. Search for that. Uh, A7S III would be a B-roll monster, Daryl D83 says. Yes, yes it would. B-roll monster. I feel like my A6500 is already a B-roll monster, and that's even going to be more of a B-roll monster. Wait till they do the A7S III, or maybe the A6700, which they'll do 4K 60 frames per second. We hope. That will be good. Daniel Crowley says, Fuji X-H1 looks pretty good. I have the X-E2 and the AF is pretty good. Now again, autofocus really comes down to whether you have contrast and phase detection put together. That's what Canon's dual pixel is, and that's what Sony is doing. Olympus tried in one of their cameras and they failed miserably because the autofocus sucked on it, even though they were using both those technologies. I hope in this new Fuji camera, it's better, but I, I can't remember. I was looking into it and thinking, oh, it looks interesting. So. Uh, ba, ba, ba. what else have we got for comments here? OmniRay says, I'm actually getting pretty freaking annoyed with the GH5's focusing system, but it has so many good video options, like I don't know what to do, switch to Sony or not. Make sure at least you've Googled the videos of this new shutter hack, which is bizarre that it seems to help a lot. But normally if you're shooting at, let's say 24 frames per second, you would want your shutter double that, ideally 148th, but you can't do that on these you know, more consumer grade cameras. So you shoot at 1 50th. There's apparently this hack where you can go to the menus and that's called the 180 degree shutter rule, 100, 180 kind of hat. Anyway, you can set it to the 1 79th and that makes it focus way, way better. I've seen the videos and it's better. It's definitely better. It's still not going to be like a Canon or a Sony system, but it's better. So I have a GH5 coming this week from Panasonic. I'm excited to try it out vlogging and doing different things with the hack and see if it is usable or if it's going to burn a whole bunch of shots. But it's still not the same like the Sony's. You can put 120 frames per second, shoot at 1.8 on a lens and just point it where you want it to go and it tracks the focus so well that all your footage is usable at the end. It's just, it's amazing. Uh, ba, 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 ba. All right. Uh, kind comments here. Uh, Javier Mercedes. Hey, Justin, just started watching your channel. Love watching your content. This is making quality for a live stream. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Uh, Diana Gladney, on True Woman TV. I still have my G85, still my perfect camera. I will always have a swath spot for the Panasonic G85. It is amazing. In body image stabilization, the screen, selfie screen works. The footage looks so good. A lot of it is good. Uh, Javier Mercedes says flip out screen XLR inputs for a DSLR camera would be amazing on a Sony. Yes. Now I think Sony has a little attachment you can put on, you get XLR input. But Matt Krieg, I've got a video on how to do that shutter hack. Guys, go check out Matt Krieg. He's got a video on the shutter hack. Okay, let's talk about the Canon M50. I tweeted out, this is my new vlogging camera when it initially got announced. Because in the first three articles I read, they mentioned nothing about all the downfalls of the camera. But let's talk about it first. So it's a Canon mirrorless camera that shoots 4K at 24 frames per second, which is perfect for what I need. Also shoots 1080p up to 60 frames per second. It shoots 120 frames per second, but only at 720p, which they've got this new Digix 8 processor in there that honestly in this day and age should have been fine to shoot 120 frames per second. For whatever reason, they couldn't make that a go. And so that was disappointing to me, but it has kind of an e-stabilization, electronic stabilization. So the sensor isn't floating, but it, it basically shoots extra wide and crops in a little bit and, and works with the lens and makes it smoother. So, you know, that would be good for vlogging. Did I mention the flip out screen, microphone input, checks the box, and of course, Canon's amazing dual pixel focusing. 
it's kind of bulletproof. Like it's the best plus Canon colors. So, you know, for vlogging, what do you need? Well, you need a flip out screen, you need good focusing, you ideally the in-body image stabilization helps and you need a mic input. And I mean, for me, I want 4K, I just do. I like shooting in 4K, I like editing, I like watching my footage in 4K. So I was like, this seems like the perfect camera. I can make this work. The problem is the 4K is a massive crop factor, meaning if you put on, got something blown around here. If you put on the 11 millimeter ultra wide angle lens, which should give you about, on a full frame camera, 17 or 18 millimeters, it's actually going to punch that all the way in to what is like a 24 millimeter equivalent, which is not the ultra wide angle vlogging look. And again, you, you're buying an ultra wide angle vlogging look and in the end you just get a regular one. It just made no sense. Plus, and this is the killer, on 4K, it cannot do the dual pixel crazy good autofocusing. They just, they're, they're not doing it. They're not letting it do it. And this is where I say Canon just keeps driving me crazy because they're like, ah, we could do it, but then you wouldn't buy the slightly more expensive one coming out that probably will do it. And Canon's 4K video continues to just be a joke when everybody else has figured this out. Full width, Sony, no problem. Panasonic, no problem. I mean, Panasonic's a little bit of a crop, but not too much. And Canon just keeps adding these crazy crop factors. Anyway, it is wild. It makes no sense to me. Anyway, screw you, Canon. I mean, I was really excited, you guys. I had to retweet my tweet and say, no, scratch that. 4K massive crop, no dual pixel, forget it. But also, screw you, Sony. Put a flip out screen on your cameras. Screw you, Panasonic. Get good focusing in there. Somebody just make a proper, proper camera. Ah, <sighs> I digress. Uh, CJ Broad says, Peter McKinnon's video on it thought was terrible in 4K in the M50. Yeah, like, I mean, it it can't focus. It's it's just, it's just so bad. Uh, Spencer Stanley says, I'll always have a soft spot on my G85, but boy, do I love my new A7R3. I mean, that is a beast of a workhorse. I will point out a slight price Price difference between the two. Yes, maybe, maybe a little bit. Garcia Barnes says, I have the Sigma 16 millimeter, I love it, but I need something wider. I started to buy the 10 to 18 yesterday, but that stop four keeps me from getting it. Uh, Garcia, it depends what camera you're shooting on. You know, I've got the A6500 and the 10 to 18, like that, that A6500 is clean up to ISO 6400. So it being F4 is not that bad. And even on the A5100, it's still not, like, the footage is usable at ISO 6400. So I maybe wouldn't be too afraid of it. I mean, it is a lot less light, but it's a brilliant lens, plus it's image stabilized. I'm planning to sell my Sigma 16 millimeter F1.4. Ooh, did I say that out loud? Yeah, I did. Well, I've got the 18 to 35 millimeter, which if you saw my last vlog about something about the highway of death, there's so much beautiful footage you'll see shot on the 18 to 35 millimeter and some good drone footage, three shots. I was having trouble with the drone, side story. But the 16 millimeter, I'm just like, it's just not, I love the ultra wide angle look and I do love the cinematic feel of it. Plus it's quiet. So I don't know, I'm planning to sell it, but it depends on what I do with the next camera iteration. I really, really, really want to get a vlogging camera with a flip out screen because for some of the shots I do, it costs me an extra three or four minutes a shot to one, try and get my stupid small HD actually synced so it's turning on and I can see it, or I've got to shoot the thing, look at the footage, shoot it again, check it out, because I like actually shooting in manual for my vlogging and you can't see the exposure once on it anyway. Long story short. I like the 16 millimeter, it's a brilliant lens, but because I have the 18 to 35 and the 10 to 18, I'm not sure that I'm gonna keep it forever. CD Broad said autofocus, I mean, in regards to the 4K on the M50 autofocus, yes. Focuses terribly. Uh, Jim, Cal oh, my comment move. Uh, Jim Caligas, I think the 4K without dual pixel AF is just a joke. Seriously, a joke. Uh, Matt reports says Panasonic 12 to 35 millimeter and the 2517 Prime are two amazing lenses for the platform. Yes, if you're on Panasonic and you can only have one lens, get the 12 to 35 millimeter f2.8. If you're on a budget, get the old version one, buy it used, that thing's a tank. I won't tell you how many times I dropped it, I wiped out on the booster boards with it, it went flying, came off the camera, it was fine. Um, anyway, brilliant lens. I love the 15 millimeter f1.7, 25 millimeter 1.7 is also good. I just, I love wide angle lenses. 
Uh, and the 42.517 with the Power OIS is also a great lens. So Panasonic, I just love how small and compact it is too. It's just, it's so nice. Uh, Omnire says, how, so you didn't know beforehand that you only got contrast AF and 4K? No, I didn't. I read a ton of articles on it and never once did it tell me that the M50 had that. Matt Report says, I remember that tweet, Justin. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Uh, making me look silly, Canon. Uh, Matt Creek says, do you think Canon is paying all the big YouTubers to use Canon? I don't know if they are paying all of them. I'm sure some of them are. There can be handy perks that you get when you're well connected into those organizations. Like you want a new camera? What do you know? You get a new camera. You want to try a new lens? What do you know? You get that lens. And while it's maybe not a cash exchange, it's saving you a whole bunch of cash. So when they say, hey everybody, try out this new 6D Mark II, think of it this way. And everybody goes, hmm, okay. And they put it out there and then none of them in the end use it. Something's going on there. But the Canon 6D Mark II, when it made it splash like, you know, two months ago, I think it, again, it made sense. A full frame sensor, flip out screen, good autofocus, should be reasonably good in low light. Yeah, I made the dynamic range isn't where you want it to be, but you know, it, it made sense as a high-end vlogging camera, but in the end, all the videos I've seen with it, I'm just like, I just don't like the look of it. So, I don't know. More Fuzz says, you ever vlogged with a gimbal? Um, I haven't spent a ton of time vlogging with the gimbal. We talked earlier on how I had a Moza Air and I sold it because I just found it to be too much work. But you can do it, but I'll also say with a little bit of practice, having a Gorillapod, you can get pretty smooth. The other thing about a gimbal is you can't wrap a gimbal around a tree. And you can with a Gorilla Pod, or you can put a Gorilla Pod in a lot of other places that make the shot a lot more interesting. Whereas a gimbal, you have to flip out feet, but if you're on the side of a hill, how do you straighten it out? So I actually find vlogs a lot more interesting when you're putting the camera in random places as opposed to people that are always just walking and talking. If you're talking to the camera for too long in a vlog, it just gets so boring, you guys. So, something to consider there. Uh, bu -bu -bu -oh, here we go. Spencer Stanley had a huge price difference, but I bought it for client work, not for YouTube. Yes, if you're a professional, A7 III makes a ton of sense. Uh, I'm considering it. CJ Abroad says, use 60mm f2.8 with the ultra-wide adapter for vlogging. No zoom, but it's fine. Cool. Uh, Javier Mercedes, Sony RX100, still a great all-around option, just the sound quality since it doesn't have a mic input. I actually have a Sony RX100. Guys, don't run away. I'm just, uh, I'll be, I'm just grabbing something. Okay, just, just grabbing something. It's okay. Oh, uh, where did I put it? 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 I don't remember now. My kids are in here, and now I don't know. Somewhere around here is an RX100 Mark V, which we bought for our our little vlogging adventure. Now, if you didn't follow along, we made this video about our province, Saskatchewan, adopting the Vegas Golden Knights, the newest NHL team, as the official team of the province. And it went kind of wild. It had like 100,000 views on Facebook and hundreds of shares and all these comments. And we built up this following of all these Vegas fans. And they wanted us to come down there. And we wanted to go down and see a game. So we flew to LA went to a game the first night, and then in the morning got up and drove over to Vegas and then went to the game that night. The cool thing about when we were in Vegas was we had full media credentials. So we got to go like pre-game interviews and into the locker room after the game and up in the press box and like access everywhere. So it was a wild trip. But when we were in LA, we did not have press passes. And the Staples Center, you cannot bring in any camera that has interchangeable lenses. So my normal vlogging rig would not have made it. But a point and shoot is fine. So. What's the best point and shoot out there right now? The Sony RX100 Mark V. So if you look two vlogs ago about when we're at the hockey game, that entire thing is shot on an RX100. It's just shot at 1080p because while we were traveling and you don't know where your internet speeds are gonna be and so shooting in 4K can be a bit of a mess, plus it takes a little bit longer, all that, yada, yada. But the quality is quite, quite good. I had it on the second highest focus setting, so it wasn't maybe as fast as it needed to be all of the time, but I could dial that up a little bit more. I just know sometimes if you dial it up too much, it it, it looks a bit funny, and I hadn't used a camera for it, so I put it somewhere safe. But overall, 120 frames per second, slow-mo bit, looks great. In the low light, it's doing pretty good. And that lens is so fast that, you know, it's letting in so much light, 
and that's a nice range anyway. I was super impressed with the camera. The stabilization is pretty good. We had this little, like, it looks like a pistol grip that you put on the bottom, just so at least you're not holding on to the side of the camera. And I would say I want to have one of those in my bag at all times, but I don't know if we're going to keep it because I think there's a Mark VI coming soon. And it's like here in Canada, it's like 1300 bucks after tax. So it's no small investment. But if you're going to buy a point and shoot, I think that one's the best. Unless you're slightly more photo, photo leaning, then I would say the Panasonic LX10. Although there's no viewfinder, so RX100. Anyway, it was an amazing little camera. Amazing. I'm so impressed with that camera. I want one. I want two. I want five. They're, they're just, they're really, really, really good. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Oh, yeah. Uh, who said that here? Plus, uh, Javier says, plus Sony RX100 has a 960 frames per second, which is a little bit, I mean, it's wild and crazy. The video starts looking kind of trashy that high, unless you have wild amounts of light, then it's okay, because, you know, your shutter speed needs to be at least one one thousandth. So it's basically okay for outside in daylight, or else the, you know, the ISO just starts getting cranked up super, super high. Joel Acker says, A7 III or wait for the A7S III? Well, I never, ever, ever think you should wait if, if your camera is stopping you from creating. Like somebody who right now is saying, hey, I'm filming on my iPhone, but I'm looking to get a camera for vlogging. Should I get one that's out today or one that could be out in a month or six months? I would say just buy something today so you can get creating because that is the most important thing is that you have some kind of tool that you feel reasonably good about creating. Does it suck when you buy something and a month later they announce something new? Yes, but if you approach your whole life that way, you will never get into a good creating rhythm and you will end up losing out on so many chances to get so much better at your own skills, which is the most important. Now, if you're like me and I've got an A6500, which is a great tool that I can create with, the A7 III would be nice. Another nice feature about it is it has a headphone jack, so you can actually like listen in on what's happening. Uh, my monitor that I put on top, you can get a headphone jack out of that, so that, that, that can help, but you know, it is a better tool, and yes, if I was buying new today, would I get an A6500 or an A7 III? I would get an A7 III. But I don't need it right now, so I am probably going to wait for the A7S III because I still want one with a flip-out screen. I don't know if that's going to have it. Uh, but the A7S III is going to be a video beast when it comes out. Like, it is going to be amazing. And so if you can get by with what you have now, sure, I would wait. So I'm probably going to wait. But also, if you're a person who needs two camera bodies... You could just upgrade and then get the other one too. And then maybe sell the A7 III because I think it's going to hold its value fairly well too. So Options there. OmniRady says, have you ever seen the quality of 960 FPS on the RX 100? Not really usable. Again, you get enough light and it's still kind of neat depending what a person is doing. Uh, but you do need a lot of light. B -b 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 Daniel Crotty, the A7 III will kill the Canon 60 Mark II. Absolutely. I think in every way except for the fact that it doesn't have a flip-out screen. So if you're wanting to vlog... You can leave exposure to manual. Here, here's the thing to understand. You can shoot an aperture priority, which lets you basically set, you know, how you want, how blurry you want the background to be. But then the camera is automatically changing the ISO and the shutter speed. And what can happen is, if you want to film your face and it's really bright behind you, guess what? Your face is going to be really dark. And so. The only way to really do that is to go into manual mode and set that, but when you don't have a flip-out screen to see that your face is really dark, you can't adjust for that. And so there are lots of times where I'm filming something and I don't realize that I don't like the way that it is, but in a longer clip, you're like, well, just brighten up the clip. Well, but for part of the clip, it might be too dark, and then for another part of it, it might be too bright. And so if you brighten it, you're, you're basically just screwing up the whole clip. So a flip-out screen to be able to see that, just to quickly check before you film, like when I have a screen, I will just do a quick check of the three places in the room I know I'm going to be, you know, and just have a quick look to go, how is the exposure going to be in here, and adjust for it. But otherwise, eh, it's just, it's tough. Uh, ba, 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 da, 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 da. Uh, da, da, da. Uh, Matt Creek says, how difficult is it to color match Sony to Panasonic cameras? Uh, you just got to figure it out once. So if you get a good setting on your Sony and you have a setting on your Panasonic, then you, you know, you basically could kind of save a little profile for it and you would be close and you just afterwards you would tweak it. But it would be a little bit of work up front to figure it out because the tones are going to be a little bit different because the color science is a little bit different. 
da, 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 da. Hannah Adam, will you ever do a meet and greet? I don't know. I just like, I'm not that big. I don't know. Maybe. Uh, Fivos, hey, excuse me if you already answer this. What lens did you film your latest vlog with? 10 to 18. Welcome, Fivos, part of the OG club. Uh, the last vlog was the 10 to 18. I hadn't, I don't think I answered that. Maybe I did. Anyway, I did the last vlog in the 10 to 18 because especially if you're vlogging and there's two people, something like a 16 millimeter, which works out to a 24 millimeter on a full frame, it just isn't like wide enough. And it's hard to get two people in there without everybody scrunching in. So it was shot on the 10 to 18 millimeter. Plus when it's that wide, it is, there's way less shake. I love that lens. I just, I love ultra wide angle lenses for vlogging because you see uh, most of the background. I think for me, a 16 to 35 millimeter on full frame at 2.8, now we're talking. I'm gonna get there someday. Someday. Joel Acker, thanks for asking my question. You are very, very welcome. Uh, Matt Krieg, I consider you pretty big among camera tech people. Thank you, I appreciate that. What else? I have the cheap camera. I have no idea how long the battery's gonna last because you can't plug in USB power and run that at the same time like my A6500, so who who knows? Uh, Fibos, OG, let's go. I'm loving the Sigma 16 millimeter, man. Been doing vlogs lately. I have four to five. I need to edit and upload. Can't wait to see them. You guys, Fibos, he's, he's a really good filmmaker. His eye is amazing, so I like watching his stuff. Love watching his stuff. Um, Anna Adam, I'm actually impressed you're still watching because well, I don't know, maybe you're interested in cameras and all sorts of things, or just hanging out for fun. Anyway, thank you. I, I appreciate everybody, too, hanging out on a Sunday afternoon. Uh, I'm going to NAB, you guys. Do you know NAB, the massive broadcasting show? Uh, a friend of mine offered to pay if I would talk camera tech with them, and I said, uh, yeah, sure. Plus, it'll be lots of great content, so I'm going to bring the cameras down. We're going to make some more videos at NAB. Uh, also have one more vlog, which is kind of the final big one from our Vegas trip to edit and put out there. If you guys haven't seen the vlogs yet, you know, watch them. I think they're pretty awesome. They're kind of stories. I will mention this though, insider tip, for those of you who have been on the live stream for a long time, Justin that you see in the Justin and Greg show or in Justin and Greg vlogs, he's like, he's dialed up a little bit, okay? And I don't hate Greg and it, but it, it's, it's just, it's part of the fun, you guys. So please just embrace the, the funniness and the humor and the little bit more zaniness. It's just, it's part of that show and those personas and, and who we are there. Um, also, if you aren't subscribed yet to Justin and Greg, please do so, youtube.com slash Justin and Greg, because I won't be able to post that stuff on this channel for forever, because there are already people who are following both and saying, why are you uploading to both spots? And it's just, well, I put a lot of time and effort into those vlogs, and that's Justin and Greg characters, and it should live over on that YouTube channel, but I wanted you guys to be able to see them as well. And so it, I might be at times writing a post and linking people to there, but that content, I don't, I don't necessarily want to confuse. Because I know somebody's like, do you hate Greg? And it's like, no, nah, it's just like, it's a show. It's a show, but if you see me here, I'm very kind and inspirational and I, I love you guys, and, and but for the show there, it's, it's a bit of a character anyway. YouTube.com slash Justin and Greg. Please subscribe. Please subscribe. Uh, I'll be do any YouTubers in Winnipeg, me when I'm there. <laughs> you know what, I don't actually know that many YouTubers in Winnipeg. There is a guy, what's his name? Uh, I don't know if he YouTubes that much. He did for a little bit. Spencer Stanley. I can't remember if that was him. Anyway, yeah. Uh, but, 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 uh, Wayne Nicholson, I think the Sony A6500 is still a great camera for the size and will be for a long time. I agree. What an amazing little camera. 120 frames per second, looks amazing. I just like, I have a friend of mine is a longtime director, like international award winning director. Uh, he's, I mean, he's, 20 years older than I am, but he, he was he was commenting about how much I use slow motion. I was like, yeah, if I didn't have slow motion, I'd be a terrible filmmaker. And he laughed because apparently that's the thing in the industry where it's like, well, if you can't make it look nice, just shoot slow motion. It's like, yeah, that's 120 frames per second. It makes things look so, so nice. Uh, Jason Joe, yeah, still pro procrastinating on that homework. Yeah, uh, you know, hey, we've probably got another like 10 minutes left in the battery and then we'll and we'll jump off here. Uh, Matt, Metra here, question, your overall favorite blogging camera? Okay, that is a good question. If right now all my cameras got stolen, or let's think of something less morbid, 
somebody offered me a ton of money to buy all my cameras and I had to go just buy a camera today to use for vlogging. What would I buy? Hmm. I think that I would buy the new Canon M50. Even though I just ragged on it for a while, but vlogging doesn't have to happen in 4K. And there's so many trade-offs right now where I go, hmm, I think what, I, what matters the most to me, there are, I think, three things that, that I cannot live without for vlogging, for making high-quality vlogs. Great autofocus, I just don't want to have to worry about that. I think that's important. A flip-out screen, I think that's important. A microphone that you can plug in for good audio, especially where I live, very important. And then maybe in-body image stabilization, not critical, but helps smooth the vlogs. If you can have those, you'll be okay. I want to add 4K to that mix, but right now you can't have all those. You got to drop at least one or two of those. So I think the new Canon M50 is a great option. It's not that expensive either. The only thing is, I guess it's technically not out yet. A Canon SL2, I think is a great entry level camera. It's, it's not that heavy. The lenses on Canon are really cheap and it basically checks all those boxes other than 4K. So that's good. A Panasonic G85 is still a good option. It maybe doesn't focus as well, but it does all those other things really nicely other than Panasonic lenses can be expensive. So if you want the ultra wide angle look, that's tough. On Sony right now, I feel like there's actually just not a good vlogging camera, like an RX100, because it fits in your pocket, but your audio is not going to be great. And the stabilization's okay on it, but you know, yeah, it's tough. I, I actually, I don't, I don't know what I would buy, but maybe a Canon, maybe. So yeah, that's a, that's a good question. Uh, Omner A says, Sunday evening over here in the Netherlands, actually. By the way, are you planning on any new traveling content anytime soon? Ever been to Europe? I have been to Europe. Uh, I've been to Ireland three times, and then I've been to, like, Austria, Italy. But there's actually this spot in Austria. We went up a mountain, and we were in, like, Austria, Italy, and another country all at the same time. Uh, but I would love, love, love to get back over there again. Javier Mercedes recently got the Rokinon 14mm for our Sony A7S and FS7 and it's pretty good for the price, especially since we didn't have a wide option before. That is actually a great little lens. Great little lens. Uh, I'll be due. I've got a Canon 70D, but I'm disappointed with 60 frames per second at 720p. Is it worth upgrading or should I just shoot 24 or 30 frames per second without slow motion? I love slow motion and I love the option of having slow motion. So even getting up to 60 frames per second can be nice in like a 77D or an 80D, 80D, 80D. So, you know, is it, if you want to shoot slow motion, then yeah, I think, I think it could be worth an upgrade. 70Ds are still worth something because so many people still think, Casey Neistat vlogged with a 70D. If I buy a 70D, I can vlog like Casey. And you, I mean, you could. You can vlog like Casey, but not like Casey. But yeah, anyway, so... I would say now is actually not a bad time to sell it, and for a maybe a few hundred bucks more, you could upgrade to something that would be slightly better. Matt Krieg, why are micro four-thirds lenses so expensive? It basically, I think, comes down to putting good glass in really small packages. Like a seven millimeter wide lens is like the seven to 14 millimeter, they have to put in so much good glass so that, that doesn't look horrible in such a small, tiny, super wide angle perspective, so. I mean, things like the 25 millimeter 1.7 is really cheap, and some of the other lenses are cheap, but some of them are not cheap. That is for sure. Amanda B, what lens would I want to get that blurs out the background well in my Canon? Ah, great question. The 50 millimeter 1.8 is a lens you should always start with. Nifty 50. Now, that is going to be if you're trying to show off people or places or things. Right now, I'm shooting on a 50 millimeter 1.8, and you can see here the background is blurry. So, you know, that's nice, especially the camera right now is about 10 feet back to be able to fit myself in there. If it got close to me, the background would get real blurry. Now, if you're looking for something like wider to be able to vlog with, there's not really any good options unless it gets really expensive for Canon right now that I know of. I don't know if that's, yeah, I think that's maybe true. Um, but a good all around or two for Canon is the Sigma 17 to 50 millimeter F2.8. That will do a good job of it as well. That's actually like, a little bit wider than a kit lens. Um, so that can be a good option. If not, just the primes with like the really low numbers. 24 millimeter, I guess, is that an F2.8? Hmm, that maybe not that much better than the kit lens, but the 50 millimeter 1.8 or a 
Does Canon make a 35 millimeter 1.8? I don't know if they do, but look for things in like 1.8. That works out really well. Uh, <clears throat> da, da, da. Jason Jow, yeah, I'm currently saving up for the SL2 after watching your video and testing playing around with it for a little while. Rodney says, love my SL2, great little camera. The Canon 80D? Yeah, 80. 80D, uh, if you didn't catch that. Canon 80, the number 80 and then a D. Uh, SL2, it's a, it's a great camera. And when it goes on sale, as it does every once in a while, it is awesome. <clears throat> uh, Metro here, what is the best vlogging lens for Lumix G85? Uh, the best, in my opinion, is the 8 to 18 millimeter f2.8 to f4. But it's kind of expensive. I, if it was me, I would probably buy a used 7 to 14 millimeter because they're built like a tank and then they can get back to the realm of affordability. I have a GH5 with the 7 to 14 millimeter, the 15 millimeter f1.7 and the 42.5 millimeter f1.2 coming the next day or two from Panasonic. I'm, I'm excited to try that out. So especially if you have a Panasonic camera with like a G85 or a GH5 or something with the in-body image stabilization, that helps too. But for me, it's a 7 to 14 millimeter. If you want to have that cinematic vlogging experience where the background's a little bit more blurry, get the 15 millimeter F1.7, and then on eBay or somewhere, find the DMW GWC1 G. Just remember this, G for like G, Panasonic G. G, wide converter, GWC1. That will take that 15 millimeter out to about 12 millimeters, which is like 24 millimeters, and it's usable. And it's still not that big. Anyway, I did that for a while. I really liked it. Do, 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 do. Rodney, Canon 24 millimeter 2.8 actually does a decent job blurring the background. Good. Yeah. Uh, Albie, do I've got a Canon 24 millimeter. It's not as blurry, but it's a bit wider lens, but not enough for handheld vlogs. Yeah, because on a Canon with the crop factor of 1.6, a 24 millimeter becomes like a 34, almost a 35, I guess it would be, 36, almost a 40 millimeter, which is not wide at all for Canon. So I would say, yeah, again, Sigma makes that 70 millimeter to 50 millimeter 2.8. You know, that's, uh, it's nice and a little bit better at low light. Ba, ba, ba. And I think the 70 and 50 millimeter is image stabilized too, I believe, which is, you know, it's great. Uh, have your Mercedes do you use a boom mic, not attach your camera for the stream. If so, what are you using for your mic? I found out now, you guys. Uh, yeah, there's a little boom mic here overhead, and hopefully the audio is clear. How, guys, I want to hear from you, the 18 of you left watching. How's the audio quality and video quality? Is it look and sound good? Is the It's not my normal camera setup, because again, I, I rented out my camera equipment to a friend for the weekend. So I'm working with the, the cheaper setups and the way the lens is. I can't have it as close to my face as I want, but hopefully, hopefully it sounds good. Uh, JP Quinones? It's almost like, you know, quinoa. It's probably quinones. I don't know. Hey, Justin, love your videos. I have a Lumix GX85. What lens do you recommend that will be good for taking portraits? The 42.5 millimeter f1.7. That is the classic portrait range. F1.7, it will be blurring that background hard and it'll look beautiful. Plus it's got the power optical image stabilization, which will work with the stabilization inside the GX85 and it will be, oh, just buttery smooth shots. So that is definitely for the money, amazing. Uh, if you would need a little bit wider, the 25 millimeter 1.4, buy it used, you will save a little bit of money. Just make sure the glass isn't scratched up. Uh, but that's nice as well. But I really like the 42.5 millimeter f1.7. F1.2 is nice too, but uh, I mean, that's a lot of money. A lot of money. Uh, Fivos, it's really good. Excellent. Rodney says, what setup are you using? Right now I'm using the Sony a5100 with a 50 millimeter 1.8 on it. A long ways back. And that HDMI cable runs into an Elgato HD60. It's like a... This is for video gamers to stream their video game content, but it's the cheapest way to get a really nice quality stream. And then I actually have a whole HDMI switcher that the audio goes into, but it has an audio input jack on it too. So you can plug a mic into that and just stream. And it's a really, really good setup. So we do a, a lot of Facebook Lives uh, on Facebook for Justin and Greg show. So it works good. Principal Flash, it's good in my opinion. Your opinion matters to me, Principal Flash. So thank you. Jason, yeah, everything's working fine, looks fine, sounds fine, quality is good, especially for live stream. I mean, live stream qualities can be a bit 
<laughs> I'm race. I'm watching on my four inch iPhone. So um, yeah, hey, great. Looks and sounds looks good. Uh, decent job. Love setup and background. All the shelves and purple LEDs. All right, you guys, should we go to a different color? All right, what does that look like? This is technically blue, but it shows up green on the camera. I bought these cheap LED lights off of Amazon, and uh, yeah. Anyway, you can change the color on them. Isn't that fun? That's something. Let's try to make it a little bit more dynamic. Okay, 50 minutes. Last chance for any Q&A questions, and then uh, I think we're going to sign off here because nap time will be over. And also my voice. When you talk for 50 minutes straight, and I can talk a lot, your voice starts going like, Bzz. I still don't know where that ARX 100 is. Hmm. Oh, well. Hey, check it out. Darth Vader, you guys. Sucker format. Sun ain't the sucker, though. Uh, Rodney, best vlogging tip. Yeah, here's my best one. Is make your audience better for having watched your vlog. Like, leave them with something of value. Don't just talk about yourself the whole time. I actually wish I would have thought about that earlier on. Where I did a lot of vlogs and I was just kind of showing off my world. But it provided a lot of value to the people who happen to live in my city and could experience the same places. And so... On Facebook, I actually have a big following of people from my city and got named an ambassador for my city because I was exploring my city. But outside of that, I don't know that I was providing as much value to the other people. So that would be probably my best vlogging tip. And then the other one is maybe just like crank up that energy. Whatever it feels like your normal self is, you got to crank it up by 50% or else you're mm, more boring to watch on the camera. If you were to actually meet all the big vloggers that you really enjoy watching in person and you're just to hang out with them, I guarantee you, you'd be like, wow, these guys are like kind of not boring, but a lot more subdued. And they would be because that's just part of it. You got to dial it up at times. Anna Adams says, what's it like living in Regina and still trying to be a YouTuber? Um, that's a good question. So I live in a smaller city. It's about 200,000, maybe 250,000 people in the middle of nowhere in Canada. On one hand, it doesn't matter where you live. That's the beautiful thing about the internet is you can be anywhere doing anything and still have opportunities because the internet connects you to the rest of the world. Things where I think it can be tough is when it's minus 40 degrees outside is you simply just can't go outside and vlog. And yeah, there maybe aren't as many places to explore, but it's kind of its own interesting, unique challenge where to the outside world, I think anytime you go to a different city, you're like, this city's amazing. And you're like, my city's boring. You just got to put that lens of that outside perspective. And I imagine for people here who have never been to Regina and you've been following along for a while and seen all the vlogs in Regina, there'll probably be some of you are like, that place actually looks kind of cool because it is kind of cool. The thing that I think is maybe a little bit tougher for me is that I feel like in this community, there aren't a whole bunch of other YouTubers that I can collaborate with. And I think there'd be times where it'd be nice if we helped each other out. But I'm excited because a friend of mine just got a job here in the city to create content full time. And he's really interested in this and passionate about this. I'm like, yes, we can collaborate. Also having three kids uh, and a family limits the amount of time on Saturdays and weekends too. That also makes it tough. So anyway, um, uh, Javier Mercedes, thanks for the live stream. Keep the great content. See you in the next vid. Thanks, Javier. Hav I'm probably saying that wrong. Javier. I don't remember. Uh, Fibos, hey, find myself talking about gear most of my vlogs. Like 10% of the video is about gear sometimes. Do you think viewers don't care? Should I stop doing it? Yeah, you know, it's interesting because I look at some big YouTubers like uh, Peter McKinnon, who really built his following off giving camera tips and tricks. And I think that his following is becoming much more diverse and lots of them probably don't care about it. So provided he can make it interesting, I think people will follow along. But I think there's also a bit of a pivot he'll have to do to talk about it less. But 10%, I think, is probably fine. I appreciated Casey when he would do his vlogs and he was talking about something tech related. He would just say, hey, if you don't care about this, skip ahead to this spot in the video. And he would just tell people when to skip ahead and they could skip over it. But he also just made it interesting. So I think a lot of people watch it even though they had no idea what he's talking about. So... I think it's fine. Jason Zhao, do you, when you vlog, do you have a story in mind beforehand or you just kind of go with the flow? That's really interesting because when I first started out, actually pretty much all of my vlog, I didn't have a story in mind. I would just try and go throughout the day and find a story to tell. But now looking back, I think, eh, 
I mean, that was one skill set to learn. But now when I'm vlogging, I'm usually trying to think of a theme overall. Like, what do I want to talk about today? What do I want to leave with my audience at the end of the day? And usually it's more, for me, uh, along the lines of something maybe inspirational or a life lesson I've learned or something that, you know, maybe hits people a little bit more in the heart. And so I try and kind of weave that throughout my story. But a lot of it I don't necessarily know what we're going to be doing. But giving it a little bit of structure I think helps, but a, a, a fully planned out vlog would not be good. But I think a little bit helps, and I'm doing more of that now. OmniRadius, cool to be part of this live stream. Thanks for doing this. You're welcome. Thanks for... Thanks for... The game... Sorry, I'm distracted by this. And the Gaming Glenny Minecraft is... Foot Night? Please answer this. I don't know what that means, sorry. I can't answer. Minecraft. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Javier Mercedes, you said it right. All right. Uh, people, stamp scammer, good idea. Uh, creando mi futuro. Sorry, you know. Lumix GH4 or Sony A6500 for videos in 4K. Uh, if you're hand holding a lot of it, oh, that's tough. A6500 has in body image stabilization, but it has a little bit more rolling shutter jello. GH4, no in body image stabilization, but not as much rolling shutter. I would, I mean, if it was me, I would do the A6500 because of the bigger sensor, so you get a little bit more of a blurry background and just try and make sure that it's not wobbling all over the place. Yeah, that's probably what I'd do. Or buy a GH5, because GH5 is good, as long as you don't need autofocus. But uh, both of those are actually really good options. So I would say whatever, think about the, the next one or two lenses you need to buy package that cost together. Because I think that's something, sometimes people really focus on cameras, but it's actually the lenses that that really make the difference. And there's times where they're like, I bought this camera for $500, but then ends, the lens I need is 1500 bucks. I can't afford it. It's like, oh, well, if you'd bought this camera for $1,000, you maybe could have got the lens for $500 on this platform and you'd be cheaper. So something to think about. Brazil. Uh, Anna, Adam, what got you inspired to start being a YouTuber? That's actually a good question. I was... I got into photography just as kind of a hobby because I want to take better pictures of my kids and I had bought a DSLR but I had no idea how to use it. So I started looking on YouTube and I came across this guy, Jared Polin, AKA Frono's Photo. He's a big YouTuber. And I learned a lot about photography and then he started talking a little bit more about video and I was like, my camera can shoot video. I want to learn a little bit more about this. So I bought, he had an online course and I took that and then I read a book by Gary Vaynerchuk. Actually, this one right here. Ask Gary V. And it was like, I was like two pages in and he was talking about how there's all these people who say, I'm going to do this or I'm going to do that, but they never actually do anything. When's the day that you're going to start doing something? And I was sitting there and I was like, I need to do something. I'm going to start a vlog. And so <laughs> I had a, a big full frame Nikon D800 with, I mean, a, a wide angle lens and a try. I just went and I tried to make a first vlog and it was terrible. Like really, really, really bad, but at least I started. And so that's how I started and I just kept making more videos and ended up here. So I would say I've seen Gary twice live. Uh, once was in 2012 and once was after the vlog, but uh, this is a great book. Gary's stuff is really smart. Really big fan of Gary. So. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Jason, I agree with everything. Whole Regina being a small town, everything making it harder to make videos, but there's still things to make videos about in Regina. Yes, absolutely. It doesn't matter if you're in a town of 50 people. There's something because you have a story to tell. So just go and tell your stories. Plus, a town of 50 people is really interesting to people who live in a town of 15 million people because it's just like a different perspective. So just show off whatever it is. So. Anyway, I think that's it for me. We've gone on about an hour. Still got a green stream health. Guys, thank you for following along here. This has been like wild and amazing and I have really, really, really enjoyed it. So we'll do this again soon. I'm gonna figure out how to turn this off somehow. I don't remember, it's been a while since I did this. I'm just gonna hit stop here. I will see you.